Hello, everyone. My name is Michael. I work for the San Francisco Public Library, and my co-host Kate is here as well, too. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. So today we're going to go over creating a composite photo with Pixlr. So the agenda for today is I'm going to go over what is a composite photo, what is Pixlr, how to navigate the Pixlr X platform, uh, how to navigate Pixlr BG, which is the option for removing backgrounds. And I'm going to demonstrate how to combine like multiple photos into one using Pixlr. And I'm going to show how to save photos as well, too. So what is a composite photo? So it is a photo that's kind of made by combining multiple photos into one. So if you do that, certain photos, you might have to trim off some things. You might want, not want to have like all of one photo in the next photo. And I'll go over how to do that today. And you might have to edit the original photo as well too. So you might have to cut off some stuff as well. So there might be some editing going on as well too. So on your screen right now, I have an example right here. So on the left-hand side of your screen, I have about five photos. Starting from the left, there's a photo of City Hall and there's a picture of a dog and there's a picture of a planet and there's a picture of a cupcake and a cat. On the right hand side, this is the final photo where I use Pixlr and I kind of cut off the background on most of the images and I use the um, background image of City Hall. So you can see City Hall is right here, there's a planet right here, there's a dog and a cupcake and a penguin right here. So this is how you will combine multiple photos into one. So what is Pixlr? So Pixlr, it is an online photo editor. So you do not need to have an account to utilize this platform but there is an option for you to sign up for an account. So the reason for this is you could just go there, go to pixlr.com, you can upload your photos, you could do edits, and that's fine. But if you decide to sign up for an account, you get a little bit more features. Like if you want to use some of their stock photos and you want to download them, then you would have to sign up for an account. And also, Pixlr is free, but then there are premium features as well too. You can still use Pixlr without paying, but if you pay for the premium features, you might get more functions and you might not have to wait for certain things to like load up. If you're using the free version, you, there might be like a delay, like 10 seconds or 20 seconds, and you might have to watch like an ad. And the other thing is there are ads in the free version. So if you're okay with that, you could use the free version. The ad will kind of display on your screen. You click on close after like 10 seconds and that should be fine. And there are different versions of Pixlr. So there's Pixlr X, which is like the simplified version where uh, I'm gonna go over today. And there's Pixlr E, which is the more advanced version. So that version, you have kind of the same functionality, but then you have more functions as well. And it's not as user friendly. So there's not like a button where you click and you can say, oh, I'm going to do this and click that. It's a little bit more advanced. So I do recommend that you play with Pixlr X first. You kind of get familiar with like the navigation, the functions. Then once you are more comfortable with that, then you'll move on to Pixlr E, which is the more advanced version. And the other version is Pixlr BG. So this is the background removal function of Pixlr. So in the previous slide, there is like a dog here in the picture and there's a background. So I use Pixlr BG to remove the background and I only kept the dog as a final product. Then I use that photo and put it into a different photo without the background. So it looks a little bit better. So how to get to Pixlr? So you would go to pixlr.com and Pixlr does have like an app version as well too. But today I'm going to go over how Pixlr works and how Pixlr looks like on like a laptop or like a desktop a computer. And if you need more help, Pixlr has a couple of options as well too. So they do have a blog where they kind of provide like form posts and they kind of answer like common questions. And Pixlr does have like a support page as well too, where there's like tutorials on how to do certain things as well. So if you have a time, you might want to check that out as well too. Okay, so demonstration time. So I'm going to go to pixlr.com in my browser, and I'm going to show you how to navigate the platform and how to use certain things on there to kind of create your composite photo. Okay, so on your screen right now, you should be seeing the pixlr.com main website. So once you type in E-I-X-L-R period C-O-M, then this is what you'll see once you get there. And like I mentioned earlier before, you do not have to have an account to, to use the service, but if you would like to sign up for an account, you can as well. On the top right-hand corner of your page, there should be a, like a button that says login slash, slash sign up. So you click on that and you could log in if you have an account or if you don't have an account, you click on sign up right now and you can sign up for an account. But you don't have to sign up for an account to use the service. And I'm not gonna sign up for an account today as a part of this demonstration. So I'm gonna click out of this. So once you're on the main Pixlr website, this is what you'll see. There's gonna be like a short description about what this platform is. You can read that once you have time. You can scroll down. And I mentioned earlier, there's two versions of Pixlr. 
There's a Pixlr E, which is the more advanced photo editor, and Pixlr X, which is the quick and easy graphic design platform. And today I'm gonna to go over Pixlr X and how to use certain features on there. And if you scroll down more, there's gonna be more description. So Pixlr does have design templates. So if you do not know what to do, or you don't have like a starting idea, then you could use one of these templates to start off with. And you just have to click on export templates right here. And you can see all these templates right here. So I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna scroll down more. So you could use Pixlr to make a collage as well too. So you, you might have like three photos or four photos or five. You could use the collage templates and you could create like templates or collages like this with three photos and it will look kind of professional. And I'll go over that today as well too. And the Pixlr BG version, which is the remove background version. And this is where you access it. So it says remove background right here and remove BG right here. You click on this and it will bring you to the option of the website where you can remove certain backgrounds. And here is a good example. So originally this photo has a woman in it with like a background with flowers, but if you use a Pixlr BG, then you can remove the background and you can have like a clean photo right here without the background and only the woman right here. And Michael, question? Yes. Is the BG option a free option? So yes, it is a free option. Uh, I will show you how it looks like later, but I think before there was like a paid version where you could have a little bit more advanced, but you should be able to utilize like the basic functions well out like paying for the advanced option or the premium Ooh, version. Free background remover. And there's more filter and effects as well too. It's kind of straightforward. You would choose what you want to do. Pixlr E, Pixlr X, you just click on it, and it will bring you into those platforms. Or if you want to start off with removing backgrounds, you'll click on remove BG, and that's going to be the first thing I'll do. So I'm going to click on remove BG right here in this link on the right hand side. So once I click on this, it will bring me to this page right here. And you should see like a link on the left hand side, and it says open image. So it's going to ask you where is your image that you want to use to remove the background. And I'm going to click on this right here. And I'm going to locate my image from here. Okay, so I'm going to select this image right here. So notice that it did remove the image very quickly from the background. So this works kind of well and kind of not well. It depends on what kind of photo you have. So if you have like a photo that has like a very, like let's say a lot of things going on in the background, then it might not be able to recognize what your object is and it might not be as clean. So you might have to manually clean it up. And if your background is kind of clean, it's one color, two colors, then the Pixlr BG will kind of see that and it will remove the background. And this is what you see from my photo that I removed the background from. Background was kind of clean. So I removed everything except for the dog right here. So you can see it's kind of clean, but I'll show you what it looks like before if you might have to use the manual option where you will have to clean it up manually. So if you're happy with this, then you would go to download right here, which is on the right-hand side of your page. And once you click download, this image will download to your device. But if you're not happy with this, and for example, there might be some stuff showing in the background, you would have to click on this link right here on the right-hand side, which is called fine tune. So I'll click on that. And once you click on that, there should be like a menu of options showing up on the right-hand side of your screen. So this is where you would use these features to kind of clean up your image. So if your image isn't as clean in the background, there might be some stuff showing, then you would use some of these tools right here. So on the top right-hand side of your screen, there's this bar right here of four options. So I'll start from the left. The first option is draw and it's indicated by like a paintbrush. So once you click on it, this function kind of uh, utilizes like like a physical paintbrush where you could draw on your screen and you could keep certain things or you could remove certain things. And if you look further down on this list, there's the mode option right here on the right-hand side. There's uh, keep and remove. So you can decide if you wanna keep certain things on your screen or you wanna remove certain things on your screen. So right now there's nothing here on the left-hand side, but let's say I wanna keep. So I'll click on keep, which is right here on the right-hand side and I've selected draw. So I could just draw something on the left-hand side right here. And what it's doing, it's keeping certain parts of the background that was removed before. 
So you would use this option if, for example, you use Pixel BG and it removed your background, but then it removed some of um, your object as well too. And you might want to keep certain parts of the object and you would use this to kind of put back the object or you would use the remove option, which is right here. And it might not have, have removed enough of the background. So you use this to remove the background as well too. This is the drawing option. But if you use the second option, which is the magic option, which is right here on the top right hand side of the screen, it's kind of indicated by like a wand with like a, a couple stars around it. So if you click on it, it's gonna be the same thing, mode, keep or remove. And you could just click on anywhere on your screen and it'll, it'll kind of go by color. So if there's like a lot of one color, then you would select that and it should remove the background. But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So that's why you might have to use some of these other features as well too. But the drawing feature is kind of helpful because it's very specific. You could use it for certain spots. And you could do the adjustments on the right-hand side as well too for magic. So none, light, medium. So it doesn't really work on this because it doesn't see the color, but if you have more colors on here, then it might work a little bit better. So the next option right here, the third option from the left is shape. So once you click on it, it will let you remove or keep certain elements from your page if you have like a certain shape that you, you wanna remove. It's indicated by like a square and circle. So you could choose keep or remove, and you could choose light, medium, or none for softness, and you could choose a shape. So I'm gonna choose a circle right here. I'll click on circle and I'll select the circle from here. And it's gonna remove that part of the screen from like, like a circle point of view. But if I wanna keep, it's like keep. So it's gonna keep like a circle of the background. So this is a part of the original background right here. But I'm gonna remove. So it's gonna remove the background. But this is helpful if you have like large chunks of the background that you want to remove. But if it's like very fine detail, then you would still have to use the draw option, which is um, more accurate. And then last option is the lasso option, which is the fourth option from the right near top. It's kind of indicated by like a rope that looks like a lasso. So what this is, is you could remove or keep certain parts of your background, but you could just draw off the shape. So like for instance, I want to keep. So keep, and I could draw out like, let's see draw like a circle and it'll keep this part or draw a circle right here and it'll do this. So you could draw certain parts of the background that you want to remove or keep. And this is helpful if you have very specific areas. And see. Okay, and that's how you do that as well too. So once you're done kind of modifying your background and you're happy with this, then you would hit download, which is on the bottom right-hand side of your screen download and it's going to download to your pc and you could use this to combine with like another photo later on as well okay so once you are done you will click the x on the right hand side of your screen and it's going to close off and it's going to go back to remove background right here so any questions about the remove background option hi michael not specifically about that um but there was a question about if there's a limit on the size of file that you can upload to Pixel. No limitation on size and quality for free background removal. Well, that's good. So try it. That's the answer. <laughs> try to upload. We'll see if it works. Yeah, try if you have like a really high quality photo and see what happens. So I'm going to go back to the main Pixlr website. So from this page, you will go to the top left hand corner. You look for the word Pixlr right here and you'll click on that and they'll bring you back to the main page right here. So here is the main page. And I'm gonna go to the Pixlr X version, which is a quick and easy graphic design option. And now I'm gonna click on that. And it's gonna bring me to this page right here. So this is gonna be where kind of like your images kind of are kind of living and you can select between multiple images. So I'd like to mention that since Pixlr doesn't require you to sign up for accounts and you can use it without an account and it really doesn't save your photos to your account anyway. So if you don't have an account or you do have an account, the images aren't saved anywhere on the Pixlr like website or platform. It is saved to your specific device and it's saved to your specific browser. So if you, let's say open up an image right here and you work on the image and you close it, 
but you don't clear off like the history or the cache of your browser, then it is saved on your browser. But if you clear off your history or cache on your browser, then it's gone and you can't get it back. So that's one good feature about this is it's not saved anywhere on like the Pixel platform, but it is saved to your like a browser. And the bad thing is you have to remember to save it or else you might clear off your history or cache, then you will lose that image. Okay, so right now on the, your screen right here, this is the Pixel X platform. So there's a lot going on right here. So the first thing on your screen is the open image option right here. So you would open your image from this link and you kind of start off with your project. But if you don't have an image and you want to start off somewhere else, then you could use some of these recommended templates right here. So some of these are free, some of these are premium options. So you might have to pay to use it. So if you use your mouse and you hover over some of these options right here, you can see the second option right here on the top right hand corner says free. But the first option right here, there's kind of like this yellowish crown, and it means that it's a premium option. So you have to pay like a monthly fee to use this option. Now scroll back up. And if you look on the left-hand side of your screen, there's these kind of buttons right here, home, history, templates, and images. So if you uh, started off with Pixlr and you have like a lot of images, it will kind of show off in the history section right here. Or if you want to use the templates, you select the third option right here. And there's all these templates right here, which you might be able to use if they're free. But if they're paid, then you might have to pay for the premium version. And the last option on the bottom right here is the stock image search option. So Pixlr does have like a lot of stock images where you could choose and you could use in your photo projects. So right now you can see there's some of these right here and the default search is nature. And these are all the options for nature. And you can look through them and see what image kind of fits your needs and what you want to use as your project. So for today, I have an image in mind already. So I'm going to go back to click home, which is right here on the left hand side and I'll go back to open image, which is right here in the middle of your page. So I'm gonna click on that, and I am going to select an image. So here's the image that I've chosen for today's project. So it's an image of like a beach, and there's like ocean, and there's a like grass. And early I mentioned that since this is a free version, there might be ads, and on the right-hand side of your screen, you should be seeing like an ad right here. It is an ad for Adobe, and if you don't like it, you can just click on the X on the top right hand corner and they should kind of go away until the next ad. So right here, here is the image that I'm gonna work with right now. So I will want to create an uh, image with multiple photos on here. So earlier I removed the background of the image with uh, like the, the dog so, and I wanna add that to this screen right here. So how would I do that? So I will go to the left hand side of the screen and you can see all these options on the left-hand side. So the home button is the first one, and these are the other options. And if you don't know what these options are, you can use your mouse, and you can hover over each of these icons, and it will tell you what the options are. First one's arrange and style, second one's layout and template, and you could go on for the list and you can see what these are. So the option that I'm gonna choose is I'm gonna choose add image, which is right here. It's gonna indicate it by like a frame of like a photo of a mountain, and I'll click on that right here on the left-hand side. And once I click on this, these options should appear as well. And these are your options of how do you want to add an image. So the first option near top is browse. So you will click this option if you want to browse your computer. And if you already have like an image in mind, you will find an image like that. Or if you have an image that you find on the internet and you have the URL address of it, you could use the second option right here, which is URL. You will click on it and you could enter in the URL and they'll pull that image and put it into your photo project. Or you can use the third option, which is right here on the bottom of your screen on the left-hand side. This is the stock option. So you will click on this if you want to use some of the stock photos that are provided by Pixlr. And you use this if you don't have like an idea of where to start or if you just want to use like a stock photo. And you can start from there to create your photo project. So for today, I'm going to use the browse option right here, which is the first option. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to select my a photo from before where I remove the background of the, the dog. And I'll click on that, I'll click open. And it's gonna load that image into my image right here. So there's two images right now. The one image of the background, which is the beach, and one image is the dog. 
And notice that there is no background for the dot because I removed it earlier and I saved it. So it looks a little bit better without the background. And I can resize the image by locating the square boxes on the corners. And I'll make it, I'll click on it and I'll click on it, drag it to a size where I think it will look good. So I'll make it smaller. So now it looks like there is a dog running on this, this pathway as well. And you can just move it to where you would like. Okay, and that's how you would kind of combine two photos together. So one photo is the background and one photo is an object, which you could choose. It could be like an object, like a dog or like a cat or like a computer or like a person. And you can add things to your image as well too. So just imagine this is the beach uh, scene and you can add yourself to the, here. You have an image of yourself. You cut off the background and you just add yourself right here. And it looks like you're already at the beach right next to the ocean. Okay, so that's how you would add more than one photo. And on the right-hand side of your screen right here, you should be seeing this section right here. It's titled layers and right below it, there's like two options right here. So once you start with a photo project, one photo will be one layer. And if you add more elements to your photo project, then each layer will kind of be added on. So for instance, the background is one layer, then the, the dog is one layer too. So if I add more photos, it's gonna be more layers right here. It's gonna show up right here. So think of it as, let's say like a physical um, stack of photos that you have on a table and you're cutting each one out and you're just kind of stacking them one by one and that's where it's gonna live. And by the final product, you're gonna combine all the layers together into one photo. So if you think about it, if you're physically doing this, you're cutting, manual cutting like photos and you're gluing it on to the page and you're just kind of trying to combine it all into one. And that's what we're gonna to do today. So right now, these are two separate photos, but on your screen right now, you're seeing it's one photo because I've combined it, and, but I can always remove it as well because it's not the final product. And if you want to remove let's say, certain parts of it, like for example, I don't like this dog right here, or I just don't wanna see this background without the dog, I will go to the right-hand side of your screen. I look for the layers option right here. And on each of these sections, there is a little square box on the bottom right-hand corner. So right now it is checked. So it means that it is visible. But if you don't want to see it, then you uncheck it. And it's gonna remove that part of the photo. So I remove the dog and I, and I put back the dog. But for example, if I don't want to see the background, I'll click that and the background is gone. And that's how you kind of see like if it looks good or not, but you don't have to remove the actual image. It's just gonna make it invisible or visible. And while we're on here, we're gonna look at this layer right here. So the background layer is right here and notice that there is a little lock right next to the square box. So it is locked, meaning that if it's, it's locked, you can't really do much to it. So you have to unlock it. And if you wanna unlock it, you will look for the three dots, which is on the far left corner of each of these boxes. You will click on those three dots. And once you click on that, this should appear on your screen, more options. So this should be a name, this should be like a mode, and you choose some of these modes right here. I might not have time today, but there's a lot of options right here. You could choose, you can see what it's gonna change and it might fit your needs or not. So it's up to you. And there's a transparency option as well too. So you can make certain things transparent, but uh, the option right here says locked. So you click on unlocked and it will unlock this image right here and you make changes to it. Or you can lock it. So to ensure that it's perfect and you don't make any other changes. So right now I only have two layers, but for like photo projects, you might have like a lot of layers. So you might have a 10 or 12. So a question I've been asked before is, does the order of the layers matter? And the answer is, it does matter because right now these are all separate, but if you were to combine at the very end, it really matters what uh, position each layer is because let's say, I'm gonna click on this right here. So there's these three options right here. So merge down, merge visible and flatten. So these are all the options of kind of combining your photos. You will select each of these for your different functions. So if you select one of them, merge down, it's gonna merge all, everything below kind of this section or merge visible. It's gonna merge only certain parts of your layers. Or if you use flatten, it will just merge all your layers. So it really depends on 
what you want, but or if you would use any of these options. But if you don't use any of these options, and you just want to combine all the all the like photos into one, you don't care what like um like position it is, it's just going to merge everything. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you want to merge certain parts, then you have to worry about the order as well. And if you're adding different elements to your the projects, and it does matter which order it is because I will I'll show you what it looks like later if you have like it in a different position and certain things will not show up. Okay, so now I have two images right here, but let's say I don't want this image right here of the background. Like there's this ocean and there's a sky and I don't like this. I wanna add something else. So I'm gonna go to the cutout option, which is right here on the left-hand side of your screen. And then it's gonna indicate it by like a scissors. So I'm gonna use this. And I'm going to use one of these options early, that I mentioned earlier right here. So there's a shape cutout, magic cutout, draw cutout, and lasso cutout. So I'm going to remove. So I'm going to remove certain parts of it. So, so remove right here. And I'm going to use a draw cutout. So I'm going to cut off the ocean right here. Notice that it's not working because I kept it locked. So I have to unlock it first. So I'll go back to one of the layers right here and I'll unlock it. So now once it's unlocked, I should be able to remove certain parts of this. So I'm just gonna draw like a line first here. So it's removing that one line and then I wanna remove all of this right here. So it's a big section. So I might want to use one of these other options like glass or cutout or shape cutout. So I'll start with shape. I'll start from the very top. So remove it to one part of it, but it kept a line. So I'm going to use the draw cutout and I'm going to use manually to cut out this part right here near top. I know so it did cut off the big section of it, but there's still a little part right here. So I could use a lasso cutout right here. I'll just draw out the section that I want to cut out. Okay, and notice that it did cut out some part, but not all of it. So I'll use the draw cutout again to kind of clean up the cutout. Okay, so that looks kind of clean. So now I have this and I want to add like a different background to it. So I'm going to go to add image, which is on the left-hand side of your screen. I'll click on that. And I'm going to choose browse, which is right here. I'll click on that and I'm going to choose my image. So I'm going to choose this image right here. So it's going to add this right here. So notice that it's not kind of displaying correctly because of the kind of like the order of this. So I'll move this around. So once I move that to the last option right here, it kind of removed it to the background. So let's see, I'll unselect this and I can move it to where I like and I'll select it back. So now I cut off one section of one photo and I added this section right here. So now I have a different background or a different part of background right here. I have the original background of the beach right here. And I still have the dog image right here as well too. And that's how you kind of remove certain parts from your photo. You can add more parts to it as well too. And now these are all three different layers. So it's not final yet. So you could just remove certain parts of it. You can still see certain parts of the images as well. And once you're happy with it, you would kind of combine all the layers into one and that will be like the final project. And I'm gonna add one more photo to this as well. So I'm gonna go back to browse, which is right here on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna add this photo right here. So this is a photo I have of the main library, which is right here. And I'll just try to add it to like a section right here. Okay. 
And I, I did have this image of the main library and it did have a background. So I had, did have to use Pixlr BG to remove the background. And it, it removed the background, I saved it. And now it's here and I add it to my photo project right here. So now I have kind of like four photos into one. And let's say I'm happy with this and I want to save it. So there's a couple of options. So the first option is if you go to the bottom of your screen, in the middle, you see the save option right here. You click on this button right here, save. Once you click on save, it'll give you this screen right here. You could name your file as well. So photo project. And right now the file type is JPG. So you can save it as PNG and WEBP or the PXZ option. So this option is very specific to Pixlr because uh, if you choose to save it in PXZ option, it kind of saves it in all layers. So for example, I'm gonna go back. So right now, these are four layers right now. And if you decide that, let's say I want to work on this project later on and I don't want it all to be combined into one photo, then you would save it in the PXZ option. And once you save it here, you can save it to your device. Then once you, you do that, then you could kind of reload it back into Pixlr in the future and it will be like separate layers and you should be able to go back and re-edit your photos. But if you don't want to edit in the future, you can save it in one of these other options and it'll be one uh, final photo for you. I'll select PNG, I would download and it's gonna to download to my device. And like I mentioned earlier, th this is the free version. So you might get some ads and you might get some options that say, uh, you wanna try premium version for free or you want do the premium version. You don't have to if you don't want to. You hit close. And the photo should be saved to your device. Right, so on your screen right now, you should be seeing the final product. So here is the image that I used, or I combined multiple images into one. And now this is the final product. There's a beach. There's like this uh, planet right here. There's a puppy or a dog. And there's the image of the main library. And that's how you will combine multiple photos into one. Yay, thank you, Michael, because we did have a question about what do you do when you want to keep your file. It's not going to be saved to your like account because nothing is saved to like the Pixel pl platform. So everything is saved to your browser and on your computer. It seems like a super important point. If you want to save your work, you're going to have to export it. So it's always good to save and you can save it in multiple formats, JPG, PNG, or PXZ. And in the future, you always come back to it. You save in PXZ and you can make uh, adjustments as well too. But like for the photo that I just saved, I saved it as PNG, I think, then that's only one photo. So if I load that photo back up into Pixlr, I won't see any of these layers right here. I just will just see one final product. So you have to remember to save it in PXZ. So it will be saved in multiple layers. So that's how you do that. I'm gonna go back. So I'm gonna go to Pixlr X again. So earlier I mentioned uh, the templates that you might be able to use. So I'm gonna go back to templates right here on the left-hand side of your screen. And you can choose some of these as well. I'm gonna look for the, like, the collage option. Let's see. Okay, so these are all the options and I'm gonna to go to simple collage right here. I'll click on that. And once I click on that, these are gonna be your kind of like your options for making collages. So let me choose, let's see. I'll try to choose a simple one. So I'll choose this one right here on the right-hand side and it's free. So I can use this well using the premium version. And I'll click on it and it's, I'm gonna show you this. I use this template. So it's gonna load that for you and you would just have to click on any of the plus signs and you would be able to add your photos to it. So I'm gonna click on here, plus sign right here. And once I click on that, it's going to give me these options on the left-hand side right here. And I'll click on set images, which is the option right here on the left-hand side. And I'm going to choose an image. So I'm just going to choose some of the images that I used earlier. So I'll choose one of them right here. I'll adjust it a little bit and I'll move to the second one. I'll click on set images. So I'll do that. So notice that it kind of cut off like a part of the image because it doesn't really know like how big your image is or what section of image that you want to use. So you would click on position image on the left-hand side right here. 
and you should be able to move your image within the range that you would think looks good. So that is the middle. So I'll go back to the first one right here. I'll click on position image. So move it like that. Then I'll move on to the third image, which is right here on the right-hand side. I'll double click on that. And I'll add this image right here. Now click on position image right again. And I'll select the fourth image, which is right here on the bottom. I'll click on that. Hit set image. And I'll select let's see, this one right here. I'll select position image. Okay, and notice that there are more options on the bottom right here. So I'll click on one of the photos right here, and it's a shape. So right now it's the square shape. But I click on that to change the shape of each of my images. I'll change it to this, or let's see. Change it to that. I'll click on the first image. I'll change the shape again. A circle. I'll click on the third image right here. I'll go back to shape, which is right here. I'll change it to a different shape. I'll select the fourth image right here. I'll change it one last time for a different shape. Okay, and that's how you kind of create a like a collage using multiple photos. This is one of the more simple versions, but if you look at before, you could add like a different templates. So you have a more complex collage, like one of these. So you have this one right here, one image, one image, two images. And that's how you make a collage. So I think that's my presentation for today. Any questions, Kate? And now we do have some questions. Can you change the background color on your collage image? You should be able to. Let's see. Let me go back. Okay, so you go to the second option right here, which is layout and template. And there's the background option right here. So it is selected, but if you don't select it, there's gonna be no background. If you select it again, there's gonna be a background color. And right now it's defaulted to white, but you choose like a different color. Oh, cool. And these are like some of the colors, but then you could choose any of your custom colors here as well too. You just have to move your mouse into any of these color schemes. Thank you. And then another question, can you think of a way to combine the collage method with the, the composite photo method? Like, is, would there be a way to sort of merge the two methods that we saw today? Could you use a collage and a composite photo? Or I see that you did insert a composite photo into a collage. So we already did that one. Um, yes. Let's say you have the, your previous photo project and you create this collage right here. You would have to save this project first. Mm -hmm. So hit save. And I'm going to download it. So download right now. So you have to save it from Pixlr first onto your device, and then you have to re-upload it and add it to your other image. So I'm going to hit close, and I'm going to go back. So once I go back, I'll go back to here. So I'll click on my other photo project right here. And this is the image right here. And I'm going to go back to add image on the left-hand side right here. I'll click on add image. Then once I click on add image, I'll click on browse. And then I'm gonna go look for that collage that I just made somewhere on here. So it should be right here. I'll click on that, open. And it's gonna be added to this final project right here. Mm. Uh, and let's see. It's getting pretty crazy. I'll remove some of these options first. So go back and here's the collage. Okay, and I could readjust it a little bit. So notice that it's selecting the, the different one. So I have to 
I can rearrange it. And that's how you would move it. Awesome, thank you. Um, about adding text, can the text go in any direction? Good question. So let's go back to here, add text. So I'll click on add text right here. So I'll type that right here. You're asking the direction, so. Oh, I see curve. Oh, like what if you wanted to line the text up on the path, for instance? Okay, so like, let's see, curve. Let me change this so it'll be easier to read. So make it a little bit bigger. And if you wanted to be on like the path, then I'll move to the path right here. And there's like this little circle right above like the, um, your word and you just click on it and you could drag it. So I think that was the question, if you wanna make it like this. Um, could you show again how to remove a background real quick? Sure. I'll go back, Let's see. So I'm gonna go back to the main page, pixlr.com. I'll go back to here. I'll scroll down. And I'm gonna to go to remove background, which is right here. I'll click on remove BG, which is right here. Once I click on that, it's gonna bring you to this page and you're gonna to go to open image, which is right here on the left-hand side of your screen. Click on that and it's gonna ask you, where's your image? So you will look for your image right here. And I will select, let's see. Let's, let's see, I'll just select this image right here. Click open. So notice that some, it says something went wrong. So it doesn't really know what you want to remove from your background because it doesn't know which image there's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So you will have to manually remove certain parts of your image that I went over earlier. But let me go back, open image. I'll select the same image again. I'll select the, the pug. And that's how you remove the image or the background from your image. So it just once does it once you upload it into that, it just looks for it and takes it out. Yes, but sometimes it doesn't take out things you want or sometimes it's out things that you want to be in your final product. And that's why you would go to fine tune, which is right here. And you could use some of these tools to keep or remove certain parts of your background. Mm -hmm. And once you're done, you hit download and it'll download to your device. And then is that image, that image was available to you to use in a project on Pixlr or do you need to sort of upload it to? So this image isn't uh, saved to anywhere on Pixlr or it's not available to you. So you have to manually download it to your device first before then you have to upload it again into your photo project. Okay, awesome. Um, and thank you guys all for joining us today. Thank you, Michael, so much for such a fun presentation. That was high art. <laughs>